Okay, going verse by verse through the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We got two verses down, 402 to go. And so we'll pick up in verse 3 of chapter 1. But I wouldn't mind doing a shout out to some grandkids of mine down in Costa Rica. They're being holed up in Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. Gabriela, Joab, Kira, Vienna, and Judah. As uh, they're trying to serve the Lord in a pandemic environment. So we're in Revelation 3, yeah, or 1 verse 3. As I'm going through this uh, book verse by verse. And of course, this is the best way to learn the Bible. It is the slowest way. It's about like taking... One brick and one brick and one brick and one brick and one brick. You know, it's about like chinking a log house, which I have done. Boy, that's exciting. Chinking, nail, 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 insulation, insulation, nail, nail, chinking, mix mortar, mix mortar, chinking. You know, that's how you build a house. Peel the bark, peel the bark by hand, two hours per log. Yeah, yeah you just slowly work at it, slowly work at it, and you get a house done. Well, you want to build a spiritual house, you do it by going verse by verse through this Bible. I know we live in Laodicea, and, and, and take note of this when you hear preachers talk today. Everything's exciting. It's all exciting. Oh, we're going to have exciting service. We're just excited about everything. We're just excited. Oh, we're excited about it. Hey, you're going to be excited and have fun. I mean, that's the way it was exciting. Uh, yeah. Now, we're going to be faithful during the sag, bag, and drag. We're going to take a book and read the words. And there's going to be no neon light put on the words. And I'm not going to smoke any dope to understand the words. And we're just going to believe the words and uh, try to please God. Try to come up with the thoughts that God wants us to come up with without adding subtracting or changing anything that's recorded in this pure book. Revelation 1 verse 3 it says uh, this is a unique blessing of going through the book of Revelation where it says blessed is he that readeth so just reading it, you get a blessing. You get a blessing on your head. You know, it's not going to be one of these, you know, from the Popey, you know, you know, blessings on your head, you know, blessing, blessing, blessing. Uh, no, it's not going to be one of those. Uh, it's not going to be in Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov. Uh, blessings is he, is, is he that, blessed is he that readeth. Okay, blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. This prophecy, the spirit of the, of the testimony of Jesus Christ is a spirit of prophecy. So blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So I, I definitely can read it. I can definitely hear it by listening to my voice as I'm reading it. But keeping, uh, depends what he means by keeping there, uh, is because there are some things in Revelation that I cannot keep. Okay, but I can believe. I can believe. I can believe the doctrine. And when you believe, like for example, when you believe the gospel, you obey the gospel by believing it. And so the ones that keep those things are written therein are primarily talking to the Jewish people. So it's a very unique blessing. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34. And if the Bible was given vocal cords where it would actually speak to you verbally, Proverbs 8 and 9 is most likely what it would say to us. And Proverbs 8.34 says, Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. But whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. 
So how would you get favor of the Lord? Well, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so Revelation 1, 3 gives a unique blessing for the ones who read Revelation. And I know the scholars and the Roman church and a lot of advanced theologians uh, think that Revelation is so mystical and difficult to understand that you, the common people, can't get it. Uh, nope, sorry. It's one of the easiest. And if you read it and hear the word, so maybe if you read it out loud to yourself or you hear it uh, on a Bible tape, uh, and believe those things are written therein. Here he says, keep because uh, the Lord with the Jewish ministry, uh, that's what he said many times during his ministry to Israel. Luke chapter 8, verse 11, verse 28, where he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Okay, so then uh, verse 4, John. Okay, now... A lot of times what we do in our culture, when we write a letter, of course, people aren't writing much letters anymore these days. They're texting stuff, sending e emails. But when we write a letter, we usually put at the f top of it, dear so-and-so, and then at the bottom we write our name. Okay, in the Bible, Paul puts his name at the front, at the top, Paul, and then right behind that, to the ones he's writing to. So, John, here, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now, that's the Asia of that day, which we call today Asia Minor. So, to the seven churches. Now, historically, uh, he wrote these, this entire book. And then included a memo to each of the seven churches. These were churches in that day, historically. If you have the reference Bible, I locate them on the last map, the 12th map. And you can see where it says Asia on there. And so there are the seven churches mentioned. Now today... This has all been infiltrated by Muslims. Okay, so uh, today that is uh, those churches all infiltrated by Muslims, as I said. And so historically back then, so these seven churches historically were in existence back in the day of John. But doctrinally... Doctrinally, it's going to be some churches uh, surviving or being established, you know, where you have two or three gathered together, my name there, and I, and I in the midst, that's going to be in Muslim cultures, and they're going to be suffering great persecution of the tribulation. So these Revelation 2 and 3, historically back then, prophetically something in the tribulation Instructionally, uh, they could be applied to church history where there is a general description of these churches where you can generally see that throughout church history where we today would be operating under Laodicea, amazingly, people screaming about civil rights in this day. So that's what John is addressing, to the seven churches which are in Asia. In his day, you could say Christian churches, okay, but maybe with a Jewish influence there, okay, doctrinally dealing with Jewish churches in the tribulation time period, okay, well, historically throughout the church age. And then it says, grace be unto you and peace. That's just how John or Paul writes, it starts off his letters. Grace and peace. This grace is a daily dispensing of grace. It's a walking in grace. 
And the peace there, where grace and peace, the last three letters of both words is ace. Okay, and I did a video, uh, you can find it, uh, Living by Grace, part one, part two. And the peace here it could be an inner peace or it's the peace with God. You have peace with God through justification, but you get the peace of God through sanctification. They're uniquely different. So grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. So there's the introduction there of the first time the number seven is found. <clears throat> okay, so you have a description of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is and which was and which is to come. Past, present, and future. So the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, some would say, well, it say, should say who is and who was and who is to come. No, which is right. Which one of us don't know that? Come on. When you start changing words of the pure word of God, when are you going to start and stop? You know, put aside your self-righteous uh, opinion and just believe what it says. If the Lord wants to refer to himself... In that fashion, fashion, which one of us care? <laughs> First John 1 verse 1, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon our hands of handle of the word of life. Okay, so there we go. And then it says, From the seven spirits of God, the seven spirits. Now these seven spirits are mentioned also in chapter 4. Verse 5. And I'm kind of doing this maybe like we're sitting across the table or sitting down at a desk within a room. You know, pretty relaxed, laid back. You know, that's kind of my style. Revelation 4, verse 5, at the end of the verse, which are the seven spirits of God. <clears throat> so we know that to be the Holy Ghost. Now, the seven spirits of God, or the Holy Ghost, or the outflowing of the Holy Ghost, is uh, obviously evidenced not by Hashantai Tabaltai. How is that? Did I, did I display the Holy Ghost? Hashantai Tabaltai. Sound, kind of sounds a little Japanese in there. Okay. No, that's, that, that's just, but it's a nonsense. Uh, the seven spirits of God are. A good cross-reference, and, and you know, the Spirit of God, the way He teaches is He compares Scripture with Scripture. 1 Corinthians 2.13, He compares spiritual things with spiritual. So if you can locate a place where the seven spirits of God are portrayed, uh, I found it in Isaiah 11, verse 1, or verse 2 actually in particular, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Okay, so the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So we got seven. So those would be the Seven outflowing manifestations of the Spirit of God within a person's life. Another place you could go is in Daniel 5, verse 12. Now, there are two men, one, two, two, two men in a Bible who interpret a dream. And then are clothed in scarlet and given a gold chain and are elevated in a position in a kingdom. One of them was Joseph, and he was made second ruler in the kingdom. Hence, he is a great type of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we say the Godhead, we say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, Daniel was elevated to the third position, so he in type portrays the Holy Ghost. In Daniel 5.12, we see 
a similar set of seven, but uniquely different. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, so those two, knowledge and understanding, were the same, interpreting of dreams, showing of hard sentences, dissolving of doubts, were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. So you have seven. So those seven manifestations of the Holy Ghost, okay, will be evidence of the fullness of the Holy Ghost, where in Acts 4.31 it states that when somebody is filled... <coughs> with the Holy Ghost, they will speak the Word of God with boldness. Acts 4.31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the Word of God with boldness. You notice there, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they didn't roll around and bark like a dog, or have a holy laughter, or... Uh, any other nonsense that poor Kenny Copeland, a demoniac probably, <laughs> okay, portrays in a lot of his nonsense where he's deceiving a bunch of people, uh, making merchandise of them as foretold in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3. And so the seven spirits of God, as they're manifested, uh, Isaiah 11, 2 and Daniel 5, 12, are the manifestations of the fullness of the Spirit of God. Hey, we got two more verses. We're down to 400 of the 404.